I actually know this team. This team reached out to me and we gave them pricing. They said the pricing was too high. Not funny. I'm Josh Fairbairn. I'm the CEO of Morpho MFG. Today's episode of Breaking It Down, we're going to look at the five biggest crowdfunding scams on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Here we go. Try it. Now, how awesome would it be yeah, if you could breathe underwater guys. and swim with the fish without all that bulky scuba gear? Now, it looks similar to the gadget that James Bond had in Die Another Day, except a little bit more bulky. Number one, anything from James Bond available on Kickstarter? Probably not. They raised over $900,000 for this campaign by the time it ended. Now, many sites have proven how it is simply not possible. Due to its size and the methodology they state they are using, they have no plan to release this exact product. All right, I'm just gonna say, duh. <laughs> you know, Kickstarter and Indiegogo are changing a lot. Before more Indiegogo, you could just put a render in and say that you could make something happen. And it was such a new space, it was so exciting. People were piling into the crowdfunding world. Anything that was cool, people were pledging money and backing the, backing the campaign. That's changed a lot, right? That would not make it in 2021. You know, people, you're expected to prove the science of your product. And I'll give a quick example. We had a customer who made a water bottle that you could put river water in and boil it in the bottle. It was really cool. The problem is, with the size of the battery and the size of the container, it only had enough energy to do something like 1.7 boils of water of that volume. Now, you don't need to be Einstein to realize that 1.7 boils is one boil, right? It's, it's not two boils, it's, not one, it's one boil. If it doesn't boil the whole way, it's not boiled. So we, we mentioned that, we said that to our client, our client didn't really listen and still put two. The trolls came hunting for his head. I think he had raised 80 grand in three or four days. The next day, Kickstarter took his campaign down. You have to speak science on these things. If you don't, the trolls will come. Your campaign will get shut down. These people are lucky. I'm guessing this is Indiegogo. These people are lucky that they got refunded. Because back in the day, a lot of those scams, people, I wouldn't call it a scam if they got refunded. You know, that... There's a, there's a red flag right there for this video. If people got refunded, they admitted they made a mistake, they refunded all the money, which means they also probably had to pay the fees and all of their time and everything. So I wouldn't call that a scam. Dumb, probably. Irresponsible, definitely. But a scam, I don't think so. Oh baby. This may be one of the most well-known crowdfunding scams to date. They said they were making beef jerky out of pure beer-fed Kobe beef. So they didn't really talk about what they found. <laughs> they said it's a big scam, but they didn't say what was bad about it. I'm assuming that the beef wasn't Kobe, Japanese, grass-fed, or whatever they said. The important thing here, though, and, and maybe I missed this in the first one, but there's a difference between the company refunding because they realized they made a mistake and Kickstarter refunding. If Kickstarter refunds, it's probably because you're a scam, right? That means that before you got the money, Kickstarter made the decision to pull the campaign and refund all the backers. So if that was the case in the first one, I apologize. But in this case, they were caught before whatever problem there was. The video didn't really talk about what the scam was, but I'm assuming that that's what it was. Krayos Smartwatch. The Krayos project promised to deliver a smartwatch that was waterproof, voice controlled, a fitness tracker, gesture controlled, basically everything you could ask for in a watch. They started sending out prototypes to donors and when they got them, they felt ripped off. The watches were nothing like they promised, poorly made and with cheap technology. Nothing is happening. I actually know this team. This team reached out to me and we gave them pricing and they said the pricing was too high. I mean, that's what happens. There's a very famous saying in manufacturing in China and it's yi fen qian, no, yi fen qian, yi fen huo. And it means you get what you pay for basically. I think this is, can be exhibit A. Happened with this campaign as Cryos blames the China manufacturer for not meeting the standards. But the creator Steve Tan is definitely having fun with the money. Sketchy dude. Bye, Wasn't me. Yeah, see now, smartwatches like this are available everywhere in China. You can get them for a penny. Not really, but very cheap. When that campaign launched, 
it was a long time ago. Smartwatches were new, right? Not everybody had an Apple Watch. They weren't that popular. That's the only reason that campaign did very well. If you were to launch, and that, you know, that's really funny with, with campaigns these days, right? We had one campaign, a customer raised $1.3 million. The guy was going through a midlife crisis. I won't say who it was. He was spending the money irresponsibly. He spent a quarter million dollars with some company in San Francisco to help engineer. They gave us the files. They weren't DFM, designed for manufacturability. They weren't ready. It was laughable. Aesthetically, it looked great, but they weren't ready to manufacture, right? 1.3 minus 250, probably minus another 100 or 200 or 300,000 of him spending it, you know, very irresponsibly. They didn't have enough money to manufacture. So when we gave him the cost of what it was really going to cost, he said, I can't do it. I know he didn't refund and you know now even if he were to manufacture that product's out of date people need to be prepared on kickstarter you need to understand the cycles of tech and how quick things rotate out of being trendy out of being cool if you don't have a plan if you're not prepared if you're not willing to spend money in the right places you're either going to ship sh or you're not going to ship at all and by the time you actually do ship your competitors are going to be light years ahead of you, making products better than you, and your products going to become irrelevant. It also keeps you connected to your favorite social media apps wherever you go, without having to look at your phone. You should I share this? <laughs> Definitely. Meteor can detach from the wristband. Not funny. We tag iPhone. We tag was one of the biggest campaigns suspended by Kickstarter. They said they were creating a Bluetooth item locator that doesn't require batteries, sort of similar to the tile. As soon it came... That's sketchy, right? When you look at this, now these are pretty commonplace, right? When you use, like, BLE, when you use tech that's pretty commonplace and you're acting like you have some patent-pending, amazing new invention and you're not willing to share it, red flags, right? Like, people need to relax when people are doing stuff like that. It's pretty obvious clear that they never started on the product, the Kickstarter suspended the campaign. Good. Again, no. This, this, this video is not going into details about what the scam was. It's just, and if that was the point of the video, just to say this turned out to be a scam, this turned out to be a scam, okay, then why are we doing the video, right? They should have gone into more details about what the scam actually entailed, what people were actually doing to scam people out of money, because without that, again, there's not that much substance in this video. See, lucid dreaming. This device was way to induce lucid dreaming. There wasn't too much info on it. By the end, they ended up raising $330,000 from 2,500 donors before being canceled out of nowhere from their creator. Apparently, backwards... So, started. this is funny. We actually did some development for a company called Aurora. Very similar product. He ended up not working with us because he thought we were too expensive or something like that. I have no idea what actually happened. I love study and research of sleep. Basically, any product sleep-related we want to do. I find it very cool and something that I think people aren't spending enough time researching. You know, there's not enough products or services related to sleep, and I think that's going to change a lot. There's a lot more research being done, a lot more books coming out. But this, you know, right away, I'm skeptical. But I, I'm so intrigued by the concept of what it entails that I probably would have asked asking questions about the Photoshop pictures of the product and also how this technology works. Yeah, look at, I mean, just look at this picture, right? Two things right away. Number one, it looks like off-the-shelf components thrown together crap, right? It looks like I could make that at any electronics market in China for four bucks, right? What, it, what am I looking at here? The sensor, the earbuds look like the airplane earbuds, right? The headband, who knows, but it looks cheap. It won't slip off during sleep, what do you do? The EEG sensor, okay. But for a product like this to work, it's not about the hardware. Right? It's not about the sensors. Lots of that stuff is widely available. It's about the software and it's about the app in the phone and it's about you know how it's actually tracking this stuff and, and what's going on, right? Where the brain waves are strongest, right? I, I'm not really buying it. I think this campaign was seven-ish years ago. Again, though, this just wouldn't fly these days. It's a very different world. Crowdfunding is way more mature. People don't fall for, for bullshit anymore. All backers got their money back. 
sadly, there are scams like this every day on these types of sites, and some aren't brought into the limelight and they get away with the scam. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching our podcast. I'm gonna give this video a B minus. Not enough substance about what made it a scam. I don't think any of them really went into what the actual scam was. If your title's the five biggest scams, I expect to learn about the scams. However, I do think there's two takeaways. Number one, if you're investing or you're backing a Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign, be smart, right? If things sound too good to be true, they probably are. Do your research. Have they proven the science behind their idea? Do they have an existing supply chain that knows they can make it confidently? Is, do they have a competent team? Do they have you know prototypes that are already working or are literally just waiting for money to take it to the next step? Those are important things to look at. And the number two takeaway is the flip side. If you're launching a campaign, most of these problems are avoidable, right? Don't buy fake beef. Spend money if you're trying to build a quality product. Be willing to take the money that you earned and put it into a campaign. Don't think that your Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign is gonna make you rich. That's not the point. These platforms are used as launch pads to make real businesses. Go into your campaign with a competent team, expecting to spend every dollar that you make in the campaign on building the company. If you do, you'll be one step closer to making your own product dream become a reality. Peace.